So the book that I'm going to read to you today is called Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. And I enjoyed reading this book as a child and I still enjoy it as an adult. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. So he's drawing a path, isn't he? He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. Can you see him making the forest? It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon... It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Can you see what's happening? Suddenly he realised what was happening. But by then Harold was over his head in an ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without too much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry, so he laid out a nice simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. Can you see what he's going to do? So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the further he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, 
he could see the windows of his bedroom. He was tired, and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon, big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So, he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass. In the front yard, none of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of. Oops, there's two ofs there, aren't there? It's a misprint in the book. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. Do you think any will be his window? But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him, and he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. <gasps> Then suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. It was always right around the moon. And then, Harold made his bed. He got in it, and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep. And that's Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. Do you know who the mystery reader is? Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to read to you from Harold and the Purple Crayon as your mystery reader、uh, this World Book Week, and that book was given to me probably in one of my Christmas stockings by Father Christmas, and I loved reading it as a child, and I still love reading it as an adult. Bye.